Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Kaiser Schmarrn. That's right, I'm gonna show you my take on what basically translates to Emperor's Mess. And of course, the name comes from everybody's favorite Austrian Kaiser, Franz Joseph I, who apparently liked his pancakes torn into small pieces, sort of like his empire was eventually. And yes, I really do wanna call these pancake nuggets, and probably eventually will. But for now, we'll just stick with Kaiser Schmarrn. And to get started, the first thing we'll do is separate a couple eggs, which as you know, I like to do by cracking the egg in my hand and then letting the white and any associated parts drip through my fingers, which if everything goes according to plan, will leave us with just the yolk, which we will transfer into another bowl. Oh, and don't be upset if that white takes a few seconds to separate completely. And that's because the fresher your eggs are, the longer that will take to separate. But anyway, the through the fingers method is a very nice way to go if you're afraid to do the shell to shell method, which a lot of people are because they break the yolk. So if you're one of these cooks that suffers from separation anxiety, you should give this technique a try. But anyway, once we have those separated, we can set the whites aside for now, and then we'll take our bowl of yolks and set that down on a damp towel, just to help keep the bowl in place while we work with it. And then to our yolks, we will add some white sugar, as well as a nice big pinch of salt, followed by some vanilla extract. Oh yeah, the pure and the real. And then we'll finish up by dumping in our all-purpose flour and our cold fresh milk, at which point we'll take a whisk and mix this until it's completely smooth. Oh, and in the spirit of full disclosure, I actually used oat milk and everything seems to work out just fine. But of course, regular milk or any other alternative should work perfectly here as well. Oh, and I should mention, I'm pretty sure we're supposed to whisk in the flour and milk gradually so that we don't get any lumps. But guess what? I just dumped it all in at once and mixed it, and I didn't get any lumps. So suit yourself, but what you see is what you see. And like I said, what you see is no lumps. And that's it. Once the egg yolk component of this pancake batter is done, we will turn our attention to the whites. And before we whisk these in the soft peaks, I'm going to add a few drops of lemon juice. And besides a little bit of flavor, the acidity actually will help the whites whip up faster and bigger and better. Which, by the way, is why you have that ancient can of cream of tartar in your pantry that you bought for a souffle before there were smartphones. Oh yeah, the recipe probably came out of something we used to call a cookbook. But anyway, the point is a little bit of lemon juice might make this whisking a little easier. And as I already mentioned, we want to whip these up into soft peaks, not hard, dry, stiff peaks. All right, we want to get them to what I call the shaving cream stage, which used to be a reference people got when there was shaving cream. But no matter what you call it, they're supposed to look like this. Okay, the whites will hold a peak, but it's a very soft, dull peak. And that's it. Once that's been accomplished, we will transfer that into our yolk mixture, which I like to do in just one addition. Or right, if you're scared, you could do like two additions. But don't be scared. Just go ahead and dump it all in. And then we'll start mixing and folding this in. But at first, we're going to go very slowly, just using the tip of our spatula. Oh yeah, just the tip. And we'll give it a quick gentle stir, at which point we can get a little more aggressive. And using a combination of stirring and folding, we will mix these two components together until it's just barely combined. And by the way, we're making pancakes, not a souffle. So do not stress about knocking too much air out of the whites. Okay, if you mix it like you see me mixing here, and you stop just as soon as those whites disappear, you're gonna have more than enough tiny bubbles to produce a beautifully light and fluffy pancake. And in fact, you can do this if you want just with a whisk. But no matter what you use, once it looks like this, we have to stop and we will head over to the stove where we're gonna transfer our very light fluffy batter into a well-buttered nonstick pan set over medium heat. And one of the keys here is not to cook this over too high of a flame. Okay, we want the bottom to get golden brown but not before our batter heats through and sets so we can turn this over. So of course adjust as you see fit, but I don't think we want to go any higher than medium. And then speaking of heat, to hold some in, what we'll do is cover this and we'll let it cook for about four minutes or so, or until the bottom's golden brown and we see all kinds of bubbles breaking up through the surface. And once we do see that, we can take our spatula and we can go ahead and cut this into four pieces, which theoretically makes this easier to turn over but I'm here to tell you it probably doesn't. All right, I'm a huge show off, and I could have just flipped this up in the air and turned it in one move, but a lot of folks can't do that. So I'm gonna show you the authentic Austrian method, 
which is to cut it and then turn over each quarter. The only problem is, even though your eyes see the position it should be flipped over into, your arm and wrist don't always cooperate, which means somehow, some way, we have to get it back in position, which is what you see me doing here, very, very inelegantly. But please keep in mind, no matter how poor a job we do in flipping these, and if we're being honest, I did a pretty poor job, it does not matter. Because after we cook this second side for about a minute, we are going to tear these into smaller pieces anyway, and by the time we're done, no one will know how well you turned your pancake. And if after you've completed the turn, you have a bunch of raw batter on your spatula, which you definitely will, we can go ahead and scrape that off and just tuck it in between two pieces, and that will eventually cook through and we'll get at least an extra bite of pancake. And that's it, once we have that successfully flipped, or flipped like I just did it, we'll go ahead and cover that up and cook it for another minute or so, at which point we will uncover this, and then using two spatulas, we will cut or tear these into small pieces, or I guess whatever size pieces we want, or as I will eventually call them, nuggets. And yes, classically this is referred to as tearing, but I find a straight cut down with the spatula edge does a better job, or at least an easier job. Okay, I think if you do literally tear them, you get some more regular edges, which for all I know is a key part of the texture of the dish. So you're gonna have to decide how these get in the smaller pieces, whether you decide to tear or cut, or kinda do both. I mean, you are after all the Michael Skarn of your Kaiser Schmarrn, but bottom line, as long as these get broken up into smaller pieces, we'll be able to move on to the next step with no issues, and we will not get anywhere close to thread level midnight. And that's it, once our pancake looks like a schmarrn, which apparently means mess, we will finish up by adding a little bit of butter to the pan, which I've cut up into some smaller pieces, plus we'll sprinkle over some white sugar, and then we'll simply toss, mix, and flip these, still over medium heat, until the surface and edges sort of caramelize a little bit. And please note, the longer you do this, and the more caramelized the surface gets, the smaller and less puffy these pieces will be. So for maximum lightness and puffiness, we'll just do this for a few seconds. Whereas on the other hand, if we're into a little more severe caramelization, which I almost always am, we can do this for a couple minutes to get a little extra crustification. So again, you decide. In fact, some cooks don't do this step at all. They'll just serve it up after it's been torn and simply top it with some butter and sugar, or usually powdered. But anyway, I did caramelize mine fairly thoroughly before pulling the pan off the heat and serving up. And after taking way, way too long to arrange those pieces, I placed some homemade plum preserves alongside. Oh yeah, Michelle made that with our very own plums. And then I finished up with the very traditional dusting of powdered sugar. And that's it, my emperor's mess was ready to enjoy. So I grabbed a fork and dug in. And that, my friends, was an amazing bite of pancake. And this stuff would be fantastic served with so many things. But plum preserves or plum jam is a great choice. Although from what I hear, applesauce is also very popular. Oh, and please do yourself a favor and enjoy these piping hot just as soon as they hit the plate. Since when we deal with souffles or things like this using a similar technique, as it cools, it shrinks and contracts which you might find a little deflating. So this is definitely not something you wanna make ahead of time. Okay, we wanna make sure everyone's ready to eat as soon as we pull that off the stove. Oh, and something else I should mention. Rum-soaked raisins are a very popular addition in this. So if you are a fan of small shriveled dried up grapes, feel free to soak some in some rum and then scatter those over the top of your batter after you add it to the pan. Oh, and I've also seen versions with fresh blueberries which looks really good. And no, to answer the most obvious question, you don't have to tear these up. You can just make smaller pancakes and flip them over and enjoy them fully intact. But then unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to call them the emperor's mess. And if you do make these while you're eating them, I want you to ask yourself a very important question. And no, it's not, why didn't I know about these earlier? It's why have I been using baking powder and pancake batters all these years? when I could have just been whipping up the egg whites to get something that comes out even lighter and fluffier without any of that possible baking powder aftertaste, which some people are actually very sensitive to. So above and beyond a really fun new way to eat pancakes, I want you to think about this technique the next time you make any kind of pancakes. But anyway, that's it. 
My take on Kaiserschmarrn. I think anyone and everyone will enjoy these, but I believe especially kids who for whatever reason seem to enjoy things cut or torn into smaller pieces. You know, like nuggets. But whether you're making this for young kids or old emperors, this is a very fun, easy, and unique pancake recipe. And I really do hope you give it a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.